Your Grand Lodge officers have taken on the task of finding ways to improve our leadership development programs and how they're presented. In order to accomplish this, we had to look at our existing programs, different technologies for presenting the programs, and which formats would be most conducive to our members. After several discussions, we determined we had several different types of personalities and different ways in which to present the leadership development topics. Every type of technology and instructional format has met with some type of opposition. The first question asked was why is change so difficult to accomplish in our fraternity? What we discovered was the older members are skeptical and dismissive about change. The middle-aged members are hesitant but interested in change and the younger members are in favor of change and wondering why hasn't it been implemented already? We then asked the question, if this is a true statement, what is the reasoning for it? Research found that our current membership is composed of five generations and each generation had a distinctive personality. The first generation is called the greatest generation and was born between 1901 and 1924. This generation grew up during the deprivation of the Great Depression and then went on to fight in World War II, as well as those whose productivity within the war's home front made a decisive material contribution to the war effort. A generation of towering achievement, and were participants in and witnesses to sacrifices of the highest order. The second generation is called the Silent Generation, and was born between 1925 and 1945. This generation witnessed the Great Depression, World War II, and the Korean War. Many found its characteristics as grave and fatalistic, expecting disappointment but desiring faith, and for women, desiring both a career and a family. The third generation is called the Baby Boom Generation and was born between 1946 and 1964. This generation is associated with a rejection or redefinition of traditional values. They're extremely hard-working and motivated. They relish long work weeks and define themselves by their accomplishments. The fourth generation is called Generation X and was born between 1965 and 1981. This generation is often characterized to be well-educated but underemployed and marked by economic uncertainty that may result in low expectations about their careers and traditional success models. They're sometimes described as working to live rather than living to work. The fifth generation is called Generation Y and was born between 1982 and 2000. This generation grew up with technology and relies on it to perform their jobs better. They're plugged in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and prefer to communicate through email and text messaging rather than face-to-face -face contact, and prefer webinars and online technology to traditional lecture-based presentations. Are we prepared to receive the sixth generation into our fraternity? This generation is called Generation Z. They began in 2001 and will be eligible for membership beginning in 2019. And it's the first generation to be born with complete technology. They were born with personal computers, mobile phones, game devices, iPads, and the omnipresent Internet. They do not know life without technology. For them, Social media platforms are their way to communicate with the outside world. They have virtual friends and prefer to communicate through electronic devices. With the definitions of the X, Y, and C generations, we wonder why our membership is rapidly declining and why our percentage of membership retention and attendance is low. We then ask these questions. Do we continue to head down the same path? Do we keep doing what we're doing and keep getting what we're getting? What do we do to combat this trend in our society? What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? And what do we do to change with the times? In the last 125 years, we have seen our technology advance from lighting homes with candles to seeing events as they happen on the other side of the world. Our modern era began in the 1880s when electricity became available in homes. Dr. Marie Curie discovered radioactive isotopes in 1901. The nuclear age began in 1942. The first man in space was in 1961 and the first man on the moon was in 1969. The digital revolution began in 1980. What new types of technology will the future bring? Even though we're starting to implement the new technology, we're still relying on the old communication methods of providing information and knowledge to our brothers and promoting the fraternity. 
One of the main focuses of your Grand Lodge officers is to improve our methods of information and knowledge. A consensus of our members through questionnaires during the past three years tells us we are not meeting their needs and we need to redesign our current programs and provide superior information and guidance. During the 2012 educational seminars in Reno and Las Vegas, we had a total of 106 attendees totaling 609 years of Masonic experience. We had a wide variety of Grand Lodge officers, Constituent Lodge officers, and Master Masons who signed in on the register. At these two seminars, we asked the attendees to fill out a four-page questionnaire. The following is a summation of the main points of the questionnaires. A complete list of responses is available to anyone that would like to see them. On the question, how would you improve the seminars, the responses were, a lot more time for the seminar, add more video and PowerPoint to the presentations, improve the instructional methods, make seminar activities more stimulating, and increase the content covered in the seminar. On the question of what kind of training and instruction would be most beneficial, the responses were improving communication between Grand Lodge and the constituent lodges, make Grand Lodge officers more available to assist and work with the constituent lodges, proper use of the Masonic Code and EGL book, how to best utilize our Grand Lodge website, your lodge's website, and the internet, proper protocol, the officer's orientation and correspondence course, what are the Grand Lodge of Nevada Masonic Charities? And what are the Silver State and Mark Twain Awards, and how does a lodge qualify to receive them? On the question if the Grand Lodge of Nevada offered an annual two or two and a half day officers and members training and instruction seminar, would your lodge support the program by requiring wardens, deacons, secretaries, treasurers, and trustees to attend? 62% said yes, 38% said maybe, and no one was opposed. On the question, would you prefer a two or two and a half day officers and members training and instruction program located at? The responses were 10% at one central location such as Tonopah. 62% said one seminar in Reno and one in Las Vegas. And 28% said to hold the seminars at all three locations. On the question of if the seminar would become a two or two and a half day program, which option would you support? Option one was the seminar would begin Friday evening with a dinner and a short presentation of the weekend training and instruction programs. Six meals would be provided with a fellowship dinner Saturday evening and the seminar would conclude early Sunday afternoon. 73% said yes to that, 7% said maybe, 20% said no. The second option would begin Saturday morning with a breakfast including a short presentation of the weekend training and instruction programs. Five meals would be provided with a fellowship dinner Saturday evening, and the seminar would conclude Sunday afternoon. 80% said yes to that, 7% said maybe, 13% said no. After evaluating all of the information from the questionnaires and considering the information provided from past education seminars that were presented by our late worshipful brother John Singleton, the Grand Lodge officers from the Junior Grand Deacon to the current Grand Master have redesigned and endorsed a new leadership development program that will be implemented for the next five years. The new format will be a leadership training and instruction seminar and will be called the Nevada Masonic Leadership Conference. This program will be expanded to two and a half days with two seminars scheduled, one in Reno and one in Las Vegas. The incoming Grand Master will select the actual dates. This course is open to all officers of constituent lodges, appendant and concordant bodies, and master masons. Due to the structure of the conference, entered apprentices and fellow craft will not be permitted to attend. The structure of the Nevada Masonic Leadership Conference is as follows. The conference will begin at 4.30 p.m. on Friday and conclude on Sunday before 4 p.m. Six meals will be provided with a fellowship dinner, including a program and a guest speaker Saturday evening. The ladies are invited to attend the fellowship dinner and a no-host social hour will be provided. A 500-page instruction workbook, which will include a disc containing all of the information from the 2012 and 2013 seminars, will be provided to each registered attendee. The instruction workbook will consist of four table lodge sessions. Each attendee will be assigned to a table lodge. The purposes of these table lodges is to take a group of brothers and allow them to bond discuss problems and concerns, collectively find solutions, and develop counterpart support. These discussion groups are hands-on sessions. The following is an outline of these table lodge sessions. 
Table Lodge Session 1 begins with, Who's Who? Who are you? Members of the Table Lodge will introduce themselves and through discussions, questions, and answers will begin the bonding process. Each Table Lodge will elect a Table Master and a Secretary. The Table Master will be the moderator. The Table Secretary is the record keeper tasked to write down questions needing answers, ideas, concerns, and solutions. The Table Lodge will then begin brainstorming what's in a name. Each group will be tasked to name their Table Lodge. The final task of this session is titled, It's All About Me. What does each attendee want out of the conference? Members of the Table Lodge discuss their expectations and specific items they hope to learn from the conference. Table Lodge Session 2 begins with, You Can Talk to Me, Improving Communication. This session deals with issues facing your lodge when it comes to communications and explores ways to find solutions, what actions are being made to improve communications, and areas that still need improvement. They will then discuss issues facing the lodge when it comes to leadership and explore ways to find solutions. Discussing the current lodge leaders, their styles and methods, what actions need to take place to improve the management of the lodge and areas that need improvement. Table Lodge Session 3 begins with the topic a well-rounded and balanced program. What does it mean? You will discuss issues facing your lodge when it comes to a well-balanced program and explore ways to find solutions. Share ideas of different activities, events, visitations, degree work, programs, fun, family involvement, youth groups, fundraising, and other doings of the Lodge. The next topic is it's getting better all the time. You will discuss issues facing your Lodge. What is it that concerns you about your Lodge? What needs to happen to make your Lodge better? What is successful in your Lodge and makes you proud to be a Mason? What are you frustrated with and need help on? This discussion is all about making your Lodge better. Table Lodge Session 4 is Evaluation Time. You'll complete an evaluation form and provide quality feedback so we can evaluate the conference and make changes and improvements as necessary. You'll also be provided a take-home task sheet that will allow you to record what you feel is important information to share with your Lodge officers and members. The participants will attend workshops pertaining to their current Lodge office. These workshops are titled Meeting Your Counterparts. Each workshop will provide detailed information about their respective offices, preparing them for advancement and their year as master. The workshops provide valuable information and will allow time for discussion and sharing ideas. Each workshop also will discuss the importance of the officer orientation and training course. The following is a brief overview of the counterpart workshops. The senior and junior deacon workshops will provide an in-depth study of their duties and responsibilities. Here you'll learn how to prepare yourselves for advancement and begin the planning process for your year as master. The Junior Warden Workshop will help you develop administrative skills and begin the planning process for your year as master. You'll receive information on what to look for when observing current officers and master masons for future appointments of officers and committees for your term as master. You'll also learn about how to develop Masonic leadership and mentoring programs for your Lodge officers and members. The Senior Warden Workshop will provide information on how to improve your leadership skills and review the process for successful event planning. We'll discuss in detail the appointment process for Lodge officers and committees. We will discuss Lodge finances and budgeting and review the required Grand Lodge submission forms. Workshops for the constituent Lodge treasurers, secretaries, and trustees will provide valuable information and allow time for discussion and sharing ideas. The Treasurer or Trustee Workshop will provide in-depth study of their duties and responsibilities. Here you learn administrative skills, discuss budgeting, and review the required Grand Lodge submission forms. The Secretary Workshop will learn administrative skills, discuss budgeting, and review the required Grand Lodge submission forms. We'll discuss ways to reduce FTA, NPD, and withdrawals. Eight topics will be presented during the 2013 conference. These topics were the eight most requested topics from the 2012 seminar. The Grand Lecture Training Session, Grand Lodge Structure and Operations, Improving Communications Between Grand Lodge and the Constituent Lodges, Meet Your Grand Lodge Officers Questions and Answers, Mentoring, Proper Investigations of Petitioners for the Degrees, Proper Use of Masonic Code and Procedures to Make Changes, and Proper Use of the Red Book, a System of Lodge Instruction. The workbook and disc will include 20 additional topics for the attendees' review and future seminar presentations. These topics have been developed to assist the officers to be more proficient 
and aid in leadership development. The selected topics are communications within the lodge, conflict and problem solving, decision making, event planning, Grand Lodge Masonic Charities, Installation Planning, Lodge Business Practices, Masonic Youth, Membership and Retention, Motivation and Delegation, Officers Orientation and Training Course, Past Masters Turning a Potential Negative into a Definite Positive, Planning Your Term as Master, Proficiency in Lodge Management, Protocol and Etiquette, Public Relations, Visibility in Our Community, Ritual, Sustaining Our Effectiveness, The Skills of Being a Brother, Three Tenants, and Four Cardinal Virtues. The conference workshop will also include handouts, PowerPoint, and reference information. At the back of the notebook, there will be an evaluation that the attendees will be asked to complete by answering questions and making recommendations for future seminars. The cost for the conference will be a nominal fee of $30 to $35 for each attendee. The registration fee will include seminar materials and meals. For those who are unable to attend the conference in Las Vegas or Reno, we're offering a first for the Grand Lodge of Nevada. The conference presentations will be available for viewing through a link from a private page on the Nevada Grand Lodge website, www.nvmasons.org. For those that wish to view the conference from your home or lodge via the internet, send an email to nmlcedu at gmail.com requesting the address to the private web page. Please include your name and what lodge you're a member of. The information will be emailed to you. There will be several links to choose from. Each link is to a different lecture from the conference. These videos will be viewed on unlisted YouTube video posts, which means you can't search for them on YouTube. Detailed information will be sent to each constituent lodge and will also be posted on the Nevada Grand Lodge website shortly after both conferences have concluded. For those not able to attend the conference, the workbook and disc will be available for purchase through the Grand Secretary. The fee for the workbook and disc will be approximately $30. The fee for the disc will only be $10. Another avenue we're looking at would be to offer quarterly leadership development programs through the Grand Lodge website. More details are coming. The possibilities are endless. This has been a brief overview of the Nevada Masonic Leadership Conference. We hope you're as excited about the Nevada Masonic Leadership Conference as your Grand Lodge officers are and will support and promote this program.